wonderful to worship with you this day. I'm Pastor Lindsay. I'm glad that you've signed on and you are here to, to praise God and to grow in your faith. And I hope you'll be inspired by the scriptures and the message and the songs this morning. I am so glad that you've chosen to worship with us, like I said, and I hope that you'll take a moment just to record your attendance and sign in online if you would do that. Also, I would encourage you to reach out to a friend, to a neighbor, to someone that you would normally be worshiping with. Um, if we were physically in church, I would encourage you to send them a quick text message and say hello this morning and just let them know that you're thinking of them and that God loves them. Um, this morning, as we gather for worship, I just have a couple of announcements. I'm excited that starting this Thursday, um, this Thursday, April 23rd at 10 o'clock, we are going to be starting, I'm starting a new prayer time. It's called Let Us Pray. Um, I hope that you'll check out our website there. You can get our Zoom information and it'll just be an opportunity for us to gather online in community and pray. I'm sure if you're like me, there's been lots of things on your mind, lots of joys, lots of concerns, and it'll just be an opportunity for us to gather in prayer. I hope that you'll join us. I'm also looking forward um, to starting something called Java and Jesus. This is going to be starting on Monday, April 27th. Um, it'll be from 9 to 945. Um, Java and Jesus will be a time for us to grow together in faith. We're going to be watching um, Rob Bell's NUMA videos. It's a video based um, discussion group and I hope that you'll join us uh, for this new opportunity. Again, if you check out our website, there, there's all the Zoom information there and you can uh, you can share it with a friend and, and invite someone to join you. And I hope you'll be a part of that new journey group called Java and Jesus. So whether it's Java and Jesus or let us pray, these are just a couple of new ways for you to grow in faith and stay connected with one another. And I hope you can join us. Um, this morning, um, as we begin our time, I would just invite you to calm your hearts and calm your minds as we start our time of worship in, a, in an attitude of prayer. Will you please pray with me? Oh, holy and loving God, we gather this morning for worship. We gather with hearts that are filled with joys and that hearts that are filled with concerns. We gather with things on our minds. And so God, we come to you this day, trusting in your grace to carry us through hardship. We come this day trusting God that you are a great healer and physician and that you are enabling the doctors and the nurses and those on the front lines to care for people who are sick. We come this day with hope of the resurrection knowing that the worst of times is never the last of the story. And we come as people of resurrection knowing that there's always hope. That even when we experience Good Friday moments in our lives, there are better things yet to come. And so God, with the concerns on our heart, we lift them up to you. And with the joys, we give you thanks and praise. And so now let us pray the prayer which Jesus taught his disciples to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we continue our time of worship, may we just lift up our hearts and our spirits to God. As we hear these next songs of praise, maybe you'd like to sing along as well. Or maybe you'd just like to sit back. May your spirit be filled. Praise God. Let's praise God this day. Dirt. 
another time, over time now. Can't afford not to cry, not to cry out. Shake the earth from the ground, from the ground. Rescue souls from the darkness around. This is the battle of a time, of a time now. We can't afford not to cry, not to cry out. Shake the earth from the ground, from the ground. And rescue souls from the darkness around. He's our rescuer, he's our rescuer, we are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound, oh, how grace abounds, we will praise the Lord, our rescuer. There is good news for the captive, good news for the shame. There is good news for the one who walked away. There is good news for the doubter, who one religion failed. For the good Lord has come to seek and save. He's our rescuer, he's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound, oh how grace abounds, we will praise the Lord, our rescuer. He is beauty for the blind man, riches for the poor, he is friendship for the one the world ignores, he is pasture for the weary, the rest for those who strive. The good Lord is the way, the truth, and life. Yes, the good Lord is the way, the truth, and life. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord. Our rescuer. So come and be chainless. Come and be fearless. Come to the foot of Calvary. For there is redemption for every affliction here at the foot of Calvary. So come and be chainless, come and be fearless, come to the foot of Calvary. But there is redemption for every affliction, here at the foot of Calvary. He's our Free from sin forever.
experienced the power of the resurrection as we encountered an empty tomb on Easter morning. Mary Magdalene went to the, to the tomb on Easter morning thinking that she was going to go pay her respects to, to uh, Jesus, to anoint his body. But to her surprise, she discovered the tomb was empty. Jesus wasn't there. He was not amongst the dead, but he was very much alive. The grave had, had cracked open wide and he had resurrected, springing forth hope and bringing light and life to all. And so with Mary's discovery that the tomb was empty, that the grave was no longer filled, she discovered hope. She discovered that there's hope, that there's always, always hope in life. And with this experience, she found that, that, that light overcomes darkness and life overcomes death. And hope always has the final word in the face of adversity. Well, following this discovery of the empty tomb, uh, she, in her conversation with Jesus, Mary reported her experience to the disciples, the, the, the 11 disciples that had locked themselves away in the upper room. Well, we're going to continue reading that story this morning as we encounter a group of 11 men who were very terrified, very fearful, actually. And we're going to continue reading the story of Easter in the, in the moments after Jesus' resurrection. So I would invite you to open up your Bible at home or maybe up your, open up your Bible app if you'd like to follow along. I'm going to be reading from John's Gospel chapter 20 verse 1 or verse 19 through 29 john's gospel chapter 20 verse 19 through 29 hear now the word of god when it was evening on the first day the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the jews jesus came and he stood among them and he said peace be with you after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger on the mark of the nails and my hand in the side, I will not believe. Well, later, a week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them, and he said, Peace be with you. And when he said, then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. And do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is a great passage of scripture. It's, it's, a, it's a fascinating passage of scripture as we start really thinking about it more and diving deeper into it as we start thinking about it. It's interesting how over the years, Thomas, one of the faithful disciples of Jesus, has earned this nickname, Doubting Thomas. I think he's earned this nickname because he wasn't in the room when Jesus first appeared that, that first week. And so when the disciples reported that Jesus had come to them, that they had seen him, that he had resurrected and was living, his instinct is just is to doubt. He didn't believe. He, unless he saw Jesus, unless he touched his body, he wasn't going to believe. Henceforth, earning the name Doubting Thomas. Well, the second week, when Jesus appeared again to the disciples in the upper room, Thomas was with the group at this time. And in that encounter, Jesus invited Thomas to touch his body and to see that he really was there. Thomas had gotten this bad reputation of not instantly believing, and it seems as though somehow Thomas is actually being scolded for not being there and for not believing. It's interesting when we think about this. You know, perhaps instead of chastising Thomas for not believing, perhaps Thomas is actually being really brave. Perhaps he's even being courageous. Perhaps Thomas is being vulnerable with this group of disciples, willing to risk what other people think, that he might have the ability to openly share from his heart. He's able to share his doubts. He's able to share that he wrestles with what he's believing. And you know, someone that's willing to be vulnerable isn't somebody who is a coward. 
I think someone who's willing to be vulnerable and share openly from their heart, I think they're actually being really brave. I think they're being really courageous to honestly own up their perspectives and to honestly share what they think. I applaud someone like Thomas who's willing to be vulnerable with other people and willing to share from his heart. Well, perhaps from Thomas, we can learn something. From Thomas, we can learn that he's not just willing to be vulnerable, but perhaps from Thomas, we can also learn that he isn't just gonna, gonna um, shy away, that he isn't just gonna go with the, the pack mentality, but instead, he becomes this disciple who's willing to ask questions. He's willing to wrestle, he's willing to doubt. He's using to use his own reason and his own experience to make sense of the world around him. To me, when I think about Thomas, I come to see that he's really perhaps a Wesleyan at heart. So why, why do I think he's this Wesleyan at heart? Well, let's think about it for a moment. So have you ever heard of the Wesleyan quadrilateral? It's coined after John Wesley, the founder of our Methodist movement. And the Wesleyan quadrilateral is something that United Methodists use to make sense of the world around them, to, to, to think theologically, to think from this biblical perspective. And the Wesleyan quadrilateral it engages the elements of scripture and tradition, reason, and experience when we're making decisions, when we're, when we're trying to discern some difficult next steps, when we're just trying to engage the world and make sense around it. Well, turning first to scripture as a primary tool for making things and sort, sorting things out, United Methodists don't just rely only on scripture. We also engage our reason, our experience, and our tradition. And United Methodists certainly believe that scripture is the, the primary tool, but we can't disregard our, our God-given intellect. We can't disregard our personal life experiences we've had, and we can't even disregard the traditions of the church. So we put it all together, and United Methodists um, then follow the Wesleyan quadrilateral of using scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. So as Thomas is seeking to make sense of the world around him, and he's hearing from the disciples that Jesus has resurrected, he's starting to, to sort things out. He's trying to process all of these things. And as he begins to sort out and use his reason, he comes to this conclusion that he just needs more evidence. He just needs more, more, more data to be, able to, 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 be, to be able to make sense of it all. And I think that's okay. I think that's all right. But when Jesus shows up again the following week, Thomas receives that evidence, that more data that he'd been looking for in order to believe. Like a scientist who just needs more data in order to work with things, um, Thomas is really this Wesleyan at heart. He was able to engage his experience then to see that Jesus really had resurrected. He was able to encounter the risen Christ and believe that the risen Christ was in his midst. So perhaps Thomas gets this bad reputation when they really don't think that he should. Maybe he's just this Wesleyan at heart that needs to fully use scripture, tradition, reason, and experience to fully make sense of things. As I've been thinking about this scripture passage of the disciples in the upper room and this encounter of Christ, um, I've, I've been thinking that uh, not only should we maybe see Thomas in a different light, but I've also been struck by the fact that the disciples were hiding out practicing social distancing in a similar way that we've really found ourselves in the, over the past month or so. And in the upper room, the disciples were hiding out for fear of, of what might happen to them. They were hiding out because they were, in the days of following Jesus' crucifixion, they were just really afraid. They were afraid of being associated with Jesus. They knew how Jesus' life ended, and they were afraid that being associated with him their lives might end in a similar way, by death on a Roman cross. So in that upper room, they hid out. In that upper room, they were socially distant from, from, from other people. They were, they were fearful. But amidst their worry and amidst their fear, the risen Christ, he came. He came to be among them. He came to encounter them. He was there. He was with them. They met Jesus there. And so perhaps as the walls of our homes have become like our own upper room experiences and as perhaps as we are socially distancing ourselves um, to practice stay home, stay safe methods that are really important, perhaps too we're finding these moments of, of fear. But yet amongst that time of, that, of worry or amongst that time of fear, the risen Christ, he also comes to us as well. And peace be with you is what Jesus 
first said to the disciples when he, when he encountered them, knowing that they were afraid and knowing that they were fearful, he brought them greetings of peace. He didn't want them to be afraid. He was with them. And they could experience peace because the living hope, the living hope of Christ was there in their midst. The worst of days was never going to be the, the, the final days. The worst of days was never going to be the rest of the story. The living hope of Christ was there in, in their midst. And so in our lives, in our lives here today, right now, in our own lives, Christ meets us and he says, peace, peace be with you. And so if you've been struggling, if you've been struggling or you're finding that it's difficult um, to experience moments of peace, I pray that you might know that the living hope of Christ is in our midst, right here, right now, right now, today. If you've been feeling anxious, more anxious than peace, I pray that you might be comforted also by these words of scripture from John's Gospel, chapter 14. When Jesus told his disciples, he said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. The living hope of Christ is in our midst this day. And he offers us peace. That is good news. So if you find yourself doubting like Thomas or feeling anxious like the other disciples, if you find yourself questioning or just trying hard to make sense of it, know that it's okay. Know that it's okay to struggle. Know that it's okay to be vulnerable. Know that it's okay to worry because the disciples too experience those very real feelings. But I hope that you don't get stuck in that worry. I hope that you can find something else. I hope that you know that the risen Christ who conquered death and brought forth life has changed the world and he offers us hope this day and each and every day and the amazing hope that we find in Christ that can bring us peace even in uncertain or anxious times. So may the peace of God, may the peace of God be with you this day and may the love of our risen Christ be with you. May the power of the Holy Spirit fill you this day. May the moments that you encounter worry or doubt, may you cling to the hope of knowing that the, that the living Christ offers us hope each and every day. And may the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. See?
sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious
and I will adore you. Church, it has been so great to worship with you today to sing, to pray, to praise. It has been so good to be with you. I hope that this day and always you are experiencing the amazing love of God with you. I pray that you feel the peace of Jesus Christ surrounding you and the power of the Holy Spirit with you. This day as you go forth to, to be in your homes, to, to live your lives, to, to connect with one another, I pray that you might find ways to share that grace and that peace and that love with each other. I pray that you might be signs of the risen living Christ, that you might might be signs of the risen living hope among us and in our midst. Go in peace this day to love and to love each other. Amen. Mm -hmm.